Hey everybody, it's Chucka Conroy. Welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hour Glass Time. We w explored the Northwestern Sea for the very first time after obtaining the sea chart for it and had a run-in with the ghost ship. We were not able to catch up with it. It outran us because, well, whoever designed these waters thought it'd be a great idea to stick a Lost Woods in the middle of the ocean. Somehow. Don't know what led them to that conclusion, but we went down here to Molita Island, the only island in the southwestern sea that we had yet to see. I did not mean for that to be a pun, but I guess I'll take it. Two for one in the intro. And we're gonna see if anybody, oh, make it stop. I'm not even trying. We're going to see if anybody knows anything about those waters up north and how to get through them. Whoa, quite a grin you got there. Welcome to Molita Island. Lots of the island's guys are off fishing, but you'll still find many of us at work here. Have you seen the Northern Sea lately? That awful hog and that ghost ship. Scary. It's better not to think of the Northern Sea or you'll get the shears. She probably sounded something like that with that grin. Oh my gosh, <laughs> she looked terrifying. Uh, I like the character designs in this game generally. I think they're very expressive and they do fit the style very well. And it's, you know, seeing new characters in the Wind Waker-y style, I think is always a good thing, never a bad thing. Um, but she definitely skirts the line of what I think is okay. Boing oing. Want some valuable information? Ooh, I like value. There is a tiny island in the middle of three boulders south of this isle. It is said that there is a beautiful spring there. It is one of several isles that are not charted on any map. Keep a vigilant eye out while sailing. You never know what you'll find. Now, make a note of what I just said. Yes, teach. There we go. Found the most hideous way possible that I could note that there is something in the middle of that triangle. In this way, None of my pixels can be technically wrong. All right. Uh, good for him to do that. And what do you say? Wayfarer's words number two. I guess we're experiencing the sequel without experiencing the prequel. I made my way through the fog to the North Sea, where, the fir where I first spied the island. What a place. Ravaged by the winds. How I named it. How could I name it anything but the Isle of Gust? I guess we'll have to fill in the blanks. Oh, just look at this stone tablet. The guy who lives near, nearby, Romanos, had a father who scattered these here. They le they're left as a testament to his trip to the Isle of Gust. But they're a big nuisance. I take it you're just tired of tripping over them every day, so you're willing to make it seem like it's, you know, not as important to the culture as it would be. Uh, gonna make a note of this post here. Probably should find a better way of noting these. Uh... Posty! with the punctuation of the way that I said it. We're gonna go shopping right away. And this mysterious purple potion. Mis mysterious, no, mysterious purple potion. Uh, yes, fills eight hearts automatically if you fall. It's essentially a fairy in a bottle, which does not exist in this game. You can only get these by buying them with rupees. And I don't think I'm gonna buy this right now, but I'm all for this. I really wish that more games made rupees important like this. You do periodically need to go shopping in Phantom Hourglass. Remember that. Replenish your potions. Use them to do various things. It's just... It's nice because in so many games, you end up with thousands and thousands of rupees that just have no purpose whatsoever. And while this isn't immune from that problem, trust me, it's not. It's definitely better than a lot of cases where you have no reason to ever go to the shops. What is in this house? We never went inside. Oh. Wow, I almost skipped over something really important. Goron Amber yet again. It's not any different from the item that we picked up back at Murkay Isle. So this could be just as much trash or just as much treasure as that one. And now for the Posty House, what do you say? What, you want to sail to the, the island in the Northwestern Sea? My husband called that place the Isle of Gust. He used to talk about how he had visited that island. My husband was once content to be a fisherman until he left this place. He sought uncharted lands. At least that's what he said when he finally left. He refused to work, instead ruining his boat by, by braving the northern fog repeatedly. The last time we saw him was over a year ago. My son Ramanos, who's at home right now, might know a little more. But that boy hasn't worked in a long time either. He's peeved at his dad, I think. He might get upset if you mention the Isle of Gust. Well, uh, since the DS microphone is capable of picking us up, I'll be sure not to mention the Isle of Gust. Do you know anything? 
Need something, kid? What? You want to travel to the Isle of Gust? Please don't tell me you're going that way, too. Own way? Uh, if you don't know, forget I asked. Oh, that's actually kind of sad. You're better off staying put and forgetting about that Isle of Gust. We gotta be honest. Oh, really? Do it your own way. Go your own way? What a bunch of garbage. All this endless babbling about living with a lust for adventure. Can I put foot on the table? Can I make your family happy? Going your own way is no way to survive in this life. My way is a whole is a lot better. Staying home, eating cheese, that's life. Yeah, I of guess. Don't say another word about it. Figure it out yourself. And get out of here. Wait, kid, come back! Yeah, I was about to say, right as I was smashing your pot, gee, I'm so sorry that my friend got captured. It's just that my dad used to say lots about going his own way to explore. And I got fed up with him. My dad used to talk about getting through the fog and seeing the Isle of Gust. He said something about a specific route for getting through the foggy passage, but only he knew which way to go. There's a cave behind our house where my dad used to escape all the time. He called it his hideaway. You might find more details in there, but it's dangerous in there, so take care of yourself, kid. Sounds like a real fine place to start. And I think... Not nothing over here. Okay, just making absolutely sure. I thought I saw a cave entrance over that way, but maybe it's just because rocks and barrels tend to funnel you into places, so it looks like a place where there would be one. I don't know. Well, we're gonna go up into this force text box. You mustn't go into that cave. Dangerous monsters have been seen in there lately. Now be a good boy. Don't go anywhere near it. A what? Well, if my son says that it's all right, then go on in. There's no stopping you, is there? I'd say who's the parent here, but I can't. I can relate a lot to the bond that an only child has with their single mom and just the amount of trust that they have for each other after the dad is not such a nice guy. It's a little line, but I like how she trusts him. Uh, oh, 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 what? Well, that's gotta be about the saddest way anyone has ever died to a keys. It like lightly bumped me into the water right there. We're gonna hoppity hop hop. And then. I think my paws gave it away. This is a Zora warrior. As is true to nature, freshwater Zoras are absolutely hideous and everybody wants the saltwater Zoras bad. They breathe fire, somehow. You wanna hit them with the boomerang and then just jump attack right into them. Alternatively, you can wait for them to attack you first, but I think this way is a lot more reliable. They're pretty comparable to the typical Stalfos fare, I have to say. And, uh, okay. I was gonna write holy with a Y, with an E, with like EY, but there wasn't enough room, so I just kinda settled for writing HOD with a capital D. Looks <laughs> really bad. Octorox, you go down. You do as well. Hot, all in one swing. Just feels so good to whip out spin attacks. And we're gonna go down once again. This will be a shortcut back, I believe. No, actually, that's the way forward. There's the way back. And now, for the hideaway within the hideaway. My journal. I'm writing this in a private space I call my hideaway. Whenever I'm here, I find myself utterly at peace. And it will stay that way only as long as I know no one will interrupt me. Now, I do have one more hideaway, and no one will ever find the entrance. It's under the spot where the lines drawn between my stone tablets intersect. It's brilliant, if I do say so myself. We'll have to remember that, but we're gonna need something to dig with! The shovel! <laughs> Oh, you are in for it now. They gave me a shovel in a Zelda game. They are sparing with us because they know how us collectors be. We have to dig up every single space because we knock down every piece of grass. And these things are just as good as a piece of grass because under every square of land, there could be something. You don't think I'm above doing this in every room in the entire game? Okay, I don't think I'm quite that cruel. <laughs> Joke is over, I am not Cody Davies. There you go, big green rupee. Its appearance is no longer a myth. <laughs> Any suspicious spot on the ground that looks a little bit upturned, you wanna take this in hand and see what you can find. And earlier, 
I noted the holiness of this cave, which contains another big green rupee, 500. Well, uh, what I said about there being a lot of rupees in this game came to pass very, very fast. But you're noticing that 500 is a pretty high number for me to be at and not have already hit the cap without us finding a single upgrade for the wallet or anything. Well, I've got good news for you. One thing that I think this one gets very right is no wallet upgrades. You can store, by default, 9,999 rupees. I wish more games did that because it always sucks whenever said games that have tons and tons of rupees and nothing to spend them on have limits on your wallet space so you're just opening chests and wasting rupees all the time. This one at least has the common decency to not only give rupees actual uses, but not making it so you waste stuff. Wait, uh, Wayfarer's words number three. But the Isle of Gust was only one of many islands beyond that foggy passage. I will see them all. It's my life's dream. It's the only way to live. Go and live without regrets. Gonna draw a nice big old uh, emo streak over a link's forehead and eye. It's only one of those if it goes over one of the eyes. Uh, this treasure chest. A Rudo crown. That's another instance of a treasure. So another item that could be very useful, could not be useful at all, but it'll be a while before we really know if it is. Another one of these ancient stone tablets. Wayfarer's words number four. Oh, what a discovery on the Isle of Gust, the temple that reached into the sky itself. But a temple for what? For whom? My curiosity must be satisfied. You would fit in very nicely with theorists. There, I gave myself a black hood. I can't have too much edginess on my body all at one time. Otherwise, um, I'll... I was going to say cut myself, and then I realized the implications of that, and I meant that he would be too sharp for his own good, and he would just end up getting cut, so never mind, that sounds really bad. <laughs> All right, uh, down here, uh, we already read this one. Gonna make a note of you. And the last one, ah, over here. Wayfarer's words number one. <laughs> Herrick's smile is so creepy. I tried sailing through the foggy passage of the North Sea, tried and failed. I found myself sailing back up to the same point, so I abandoned my voyage. Sounds like we got the prequel origin story. Now, we want to draw lines as straight as we can. And by that, I mean not well at all. Oh, I haven't gotten to check the mail yet. I guess we'll do that in a moment. The lines intersect here. Was I the only one who figured this out without doing this? Because I decided, you know what? I'm going to dig in any spot that looks remotely interesting and see if I, if I can find it on my own. And I did. Don't mean to brag, but, you know, in front of trees is generally where they hide things. <laughs> okay, I don't mean to make it sound, sound smug whatsoever. It's pretty simple. I'm just trying to say that I feel like some people were able to figure that out on their own, and I was one of them. <laughs> To my son, Romanos. You sure left this in a really discoverable location that wouldn't at all cause him to live a better life without being able to read it. If you're reading these words, you have found my true hideaway, which means you also have developed the desire to find your own way in life. Know that I am truly sorry for putting you and your mother through so much. I'm well aware that I'm the world's worst father, leaving you both behind. But there's so much about the way of the world I don't understand such as why the ghost ship appears and steals people. Where do its victims go? I've decided to dedicate my life to finding out the answers. If I fail to return, please take care of your mother and please forgive me. In closing, one more thing. Embrace your wayfaring ways, my son. That is incredibly sweet, I have to say. I like how he's doing in a way what we are doing now, where he dedicated his entire life to chasing after that ghost ship. It's a pretty nice backstory for somebody to have as just kind of a minor little NPC, how this is what his dad did. And I remember I did feel very sad the first time that I read that. There was a lot more to it than I expected just for some random little NPC. Now, there's a strange sun emblem on that door link. I wonder if we can open it. Try touching the door link. Hmm, that didn't work. It's not opening. I guess your hand was not the solution for the keyhole. But there's something about that crest that tickles my memory. Hey, why don't I draw the emblem on your map so we remember it later on? 
Always draw anything that is suspicious. We start with a circle, and then we want to do the cardinal directions. And then we'll make the ones in, oh gosh, what did I do there? Ugh, thank goodness there's an erase button, but ouch. Do the lesser directions, and then let's fill it in. Uh, <laughs> it looks like some kind of abstract take on Rick from Rick and Morty. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. It looks like that. <laughs> That's really terrible looking. I suspect, okay, I'm not making excuses, I swear, but I think the calibration on this touch screen is a little bit off because I will tap in one area and it's reading it just barely to the right of where I'm tapping and it's making drawing really awkward. <laughs> Um, I think I'm gonna recalibrate that after this recording because, wow, that's really funny. I think we owe this boy an explanation. Huh? You found my dad's hideaway and defeated the monsters in there. Hmm, I see. You've inspired me, kid. What drove my dad to go his own way? Like you. I may just join him and find out. Thanks, kid. The ghost ship drives people to do some very wild and crazy things. Tears families apart. Um... Also tears potential girlfriends apart, as we saw. Uh, you found my husband's hideaway. I'm sure he'd be irritated if he were still among us today. Ouch. You speak so negatively of your husband, don't you? I mean, I can't really blame her too much, though, but ow. I guess there's one last thing. Special delivery. Watch out, incoming. This is a letter from Astrid. Ahem. <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait. You're gonna read my mail again, aren't you? You're gonna read my Yep. Good tidings to you, Link. Thank you for your recent help. <laughs> Try as I might to express my gratitude in words, I can't do it justice. If there's anything I can do in return, please stop by the Isle of Ember. I know that some of my modest means might have little to offer, but I believe I can at least show you the way should you become lost. Sincerely, Astrid. He doesn't even give me the letter. And that's the end of it. Got a let, sir, and I'm out of here. What are you? And I mean that in more ways than one. All right, well that was Molita Island. We explored the entire place. We got our clue for where we're going off to next. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. We are gonna take our shing, sparkle, sparkle, new shovel, and see what we can find with it around the world, then head up to the Northwestern Sea. See you guys then.